Less than three years ago, St Johnston fans were celebrating a Scottish Cup double under Callum Davidson, but the fallout has been a difficult one for Saints fans. It got so bad, they were left with no option but to end their time with Davidson and in May appointed his assistant and former striker Stephen McLean as his successor. It's been a difficult start to life under McLean. Winless in their new league campaign adds to the dismal display in the League Cup where they lost to Sterling, Ayr and Stenhouse Muir. That in turn meant they did not play over the weekend, so something McLean may be thankful of, but he will try to ready his side for their next game against Dundee at the weekend. We want to get a little bit of an insight as to what fans are thinking, so I'm delighted to say that a Saints fan, Greg Browning, he's a football analyst, better than analyst, I should say, and podcaster, joins us now. So, Greg, how are you, you know, what's your mood right now? Is it sad? Are you a little hopeful? Or is, is it just a little bit difficult to see how things are going to be right now? Because if you look at it on paper... It's it, it is dismal. It's hard for for media guys like us to to know really. I think it's a combination of all those things. There's probably a bit of anger in there as well about how things have come to be over the last two three seasons, especially given where we were, as you say, leading Galatasaray in Turkey one 0 <laughs> just over two years ago, and look at us now losing at home to Sterling Albion. No disrespect to Sterling Albion, but that should be happening especially 4-0, so also a bit of realism as well. I think fans knew over the last couple of seasons that we were headed in a pretty grim direction due to lots of factors and not just one reason behind this. But I think we're in for a long, tough and really horrible season. And we're only into mid-August and already apathy is setting in. We didn't play this weekend, which is great. We didn't get beat this weekend, which is good. First time... (laughs) Probably since Aloha, we've lost four games since then. Right. But yeah, it's been a pretty dismal start, and I'm not, I don't have high hopes at all for the rest of the season. A lot needs to happen between now and then. And I guess for me, the biggest issue for me is I think a lot of the other teams in the league in that bottom six all look pretty solid and steady. Has part of the problem potentially been on a recruitment side? Because I mean, there's, there's, there've been a couple of mainstays of the side, and especially that cup winning, uh, you know, the double team the likes of Ali Crawford, Jason Kerr, leaving who where for a team like St. Johnson, you know, terrific, terrific players. And, and they were so integral to the way that that team played. Is is there a bit of a, an aspect of that, that they've kind of struggled to replace those players once they've gone out the door? Yeah, I guess there's two things. First of all, you're absolutely right. That's the biggest issue we've had. It's not just this season, last season, the season before. Recruitment's been an issue at the club. I'm talking five, six, seven years potentially. Tommy Wright mm-hmm. highlighted it about four years ago that we need to put in place a proper recruitment structure to support the club moving forward. It'll pay for itself. I think Jim Goodwin talked about at Aberdeen and Dungeon United that they need to have that in place and it will pay for itself. Get the recruitment right, then you'll you'll sell players on and, and make money. But for us, we've been running like an army team behind the scenes now. For, for seasons and seasons now and it's really now coming to bite us back on the arse basically and I think for Steve Brown the Browns get a lot of credit for obvious reasons they've been absolutely sensational for the football club over the last 30 years Jeff and obviously over the last 10 or so years his son Steve but I think Steve as the chairman until this year until he left I think the buck stops with him for me around recruitment mm. a lot of the things in the background haven't been put in place and you have to feel for Stephen McLean at the moment. He's been given a bit of a really raw deal at the moment. It's t- you can't you can't refuse the job either for Stephen. You know, it's a great no. gig. Great gig. Like and the and the fans are fantastic. But no matter what, like you can still look back and say a couple of years ago they were cup double winners. You know what I mean? Like it's unreal. But what 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 was the six what do you think was the success of that? And why haven't they replicated that? Is it I know we've just talked about recruitment, but you know why hasn't the success of that bred more more success? Well, that's the thing. We were in a position of strength. We just won a cup double, something that probably won't happen again outside the old firm, to be fair, especially in our lifetime. And we should have been pushing on then and improving and still keeping in top six, pushing for Europe. At the start of the podcast, you mentioned about Ali McCann and Jason Kerr, two pivotal players for us. And we got £2 million for them both. 
I know Jason Kerr's contract was running down, but I, I still have a real gripe about the Alan McCann deal. Last mm. minute, end of the month, £1.2 million pound with add-ons, potentially. Um, and we never replaced those two players. And ever since then, it's just been downhill. We struggled to stay up that season. We had to beat Inverness in a playoff. And last season, we were really fortunate. There was a couple of teams below us in the league, i.e. Uh, Dundee, one of them, who, who really struggled. But this season, though, I don't see there being many clubs below us of any come, come May. It's kind of an interesting thing that I, I wanted to ask you about. Um, I've, I've got a couple of friends who are fans of teams like St Mirren, Motherwell, uh, Kilmarnock, and they kind of have this feeling a lot of the time where they, they maybe it's a bit of the nihilism that comes in just with being a, a football fan and a Scottish football fan where they, they're always just like, just safety first, I just want to survive. And I'm like, it's difficult because, you know, especially for teams like St Mirren or I would say St Johnson, you know, they've been mainstays of the top flight for yeah. about 15 years. But then, mm -hmm. you know, from slightly older generations, that might not have been the case. And there's always just this residual fear that like, well, we've kind of outstayed our welcome and we're due a season to go down and all of this kind of stuff. But is, is that... Is that potentially part of the mentality that's there in the background, maybe, for St. John's yeah, or people at the club? I think across, across the board, you'll have a percentage of fans who were at Mewton Park in the 1980s in front of 300 fans against East Stirling. <laughs> You've then got another section of fans who've only known success. They've known three trophies, multiple trips in Europe, top six finishes, as you say, 15 seasons in the top flight. Yeah. And I'm very much part of that crew, as in... I don't believe we should just be existing in the league. Let's be honest, it's not a great league, really, but there's probably seven or eight sides you could probably put a bit of paper over. There's not much between them. And I think after that double cup win, we should be looking to push on and really looking to capture some really good players as a, as a, a good place to go, play your football and get a move down south. But that it's, just hasn't happened. It's one of the things that I'm, I, I've always found quite intriguing especially because I, I you know I've got family that come from Perthshire and, and Tayside and it, it, like it's a stunning part of the country you're very close to Edinburgh and Glasgow the other big cities or Aberdeen if you want to go up the way like it's a beautiful part of the country Perth in particular like, is a beautiful place why do you think there might be a problem in attracting a certain level of player to a club like St Johnston? <laughs> Both is at the same time. <laughs> Mula, Cheddar, De Niro. So, as you know, obviously, we don't tend to pay the biggest wages. And obviously, over the years, you've seen sides like Gretna, Livingston, Dundee all really struggle, go down the leagues because they've been playing over inflated wages. And that's something that we've never, ever done, ever, or ever, ever will do. And obviously, Steve Brown and Jeff have always said they won't put the club at risk by paying overinflated wages. And I think that's got something to do with it. That's a big, big part of it. That we're not how often do you see us go for a player that lose out to Kilmarnock or a Motherwell or one of those other clubs kind of Which could be a positive clubs. as well, Greg, you know, given the circumstances yes, of, of the last few years too, you know. But I think recently though, when you look at recruitment, Callum Davidson was given a bit of a war chest in St Johnson terms. He was given <laughs> money to improve the side to kick us on after the cup win. And to be honest, when you look at the players that were signed and the money that was spent, big money for us. Who were some of the failures? Because I, I don't really remember so much. Like who? Because you say Warchest and St. Johnson, you're like, really? <laughs> we had Vertaren, the, the um, Finnish player that spent money on. Theo Bear was probably one of the main ones. Oh, yeah. Canada. Mm. I'm not sure what the fee for him was, but 80 grand. We usually get fee signings, usually, but to spend £80,000 on a player and We've obviously let him leave to Motherwell and he's scored in his debut. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there was lots of recruitment over the last couple of seasons that just never landed. And when you look at other sides, they often tend to get the recruitment right. Like, how many times have Motherwell seen a striker over the last 15, 20 years and it's bagged them 25 goals or 20 goals and got a move down south? There's lots of them. And um, we've never managed to do that. So mm. that, that that's one of the challenges, I think. And obviously, Callum Davison suffered off the back of that. Two seasons in charge, but ultimately enough was enough. Fans gave him plenty of time, I think, Carl Davidson. Mm -hmm. And Maka had one job, really, to come in and keep us up. And that's what he did. And that's exactly why he was given the job. And I don't think anyone was upset by that. I think it was a sensible option. Obviously, the cheaper option as well. 
and I think everyone wished him the best. And obviously this season it's been a nightmare. He is saying all the right things. Mm-hmm. He is saying all the things that fans know and want to hear. But talking about it is only going to get you so far. And as the weeks go on, what you tend to find is people are starting to get a little bit fed up with all the talk when you see the performances on the pitch. We we picked up on it, I think it was last week actually, he didn't throw his players under the bus, but he just said the the performance was was kind of disgraceful. And you can say that one week and, and you can get the support of the fans. But if he says it again, if you're hearing repetition from your manager, it just becomes boring. You don't want to hear any more of it. You want to hear improvement. Or, or at least the improvement's going to be coming um, around the corner. I know I don't want to put you in the in the bad scopes of St. Johnston fans here, but what are your thoughts about going forward under Stephen McLean? Do you think there could be some, you know, shoots of hope for, for St. Well, Johnston fans? Well, there's still time left in the transfer window. Obviously, last season we had an, an over-bloated squad. Far too many players. It's the biggest squad we've had in our history. Like wow. 24, 25, 26 players is ridiculous. Yeah. Hemorrhaging money on Good players point. who have never even been on the bench. Mm. So, so that that doesn't help. But for me, realistically, I have us finishing in the bottom two. 100% in the bottom two. Um, we're only in August. <laughs> we're only in August. So I don't have any hope at all, really. The players are bringing in... We have to pray and hope that four or five of them click and really improve the squad. But from what I've seen so far, we're bringing in players that haven't got much first team experience. We're even boys that have played 200, 150 matches at the age of 25, 26, 27. We're bringing in guys at 19, 20, 21. Yeah, there's no, there's no Ali McCanns or Ke- Jason Kerr's coming through again at the moment. That's that's the concern, you know, that that lifeblood, no. that youth blood. That St Johnston were breeding it seems to be dissipating. And the players that have see. been playing this season so far, and obviously don't get me wrong, due to injuries, our injury list this season's been horrendous, and I don't think many clubs could cope with that. But the young players that have come through, in my opinion, simply aren't good enough. These are guys that have been alone over the last few seasons in League One, and they're asking to do a job in the Premiership. There's a, a massive gulf in quality there for me, and I don't think there's many of any of the younger players who are are good enough. And I think as well, we've seen a massive dip in form in some of our more senior players. Yes, we always had real leaders in the side. Stephen yeah. Anderson, Fraser Wright, Chrissy Miller, Dave Mackay, Jason Kerr. But now we don't have that leadership qualities in the side and it's, it's clear to show come a Saturday. Yeah.